Let's receive right now our fresh daily bread from our Heavenly Father. Father, in Jesus' name, we believe we receive right now our daily manna from you. I thank you, Father, for this living word that is alive and full of power. And Father, I thank you that you put your thoughts into my mind, your words into my mouth. In Jesus' name. And now, let's acknowledge by faith the Lordship of Jesus. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is Lord over my life. Jesus is Lord over my family. Jesus is Lord over my nation. And Jesus is Lord over the nations of the earth. In Jesus' name. And now let's receive the Word of God for ourselves. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you that you open my ears to hear as the learned. I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, that you help me to be a hearer of the word and a doer of the word. A doer of the word and not a hearer only. And thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, that you give me quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, that the eyes of my understanding are enlightened, that I understand what you're saying and that you write this on the tablets of my mind and heart in Jesus' name. So let's go right over to Ephesians where he says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So let's acknowledge that again. I am strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I put on the whole armor of God that I may be able to stand against the trickeries and the deceits and the lies of the devil. For I wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And, you know, the Holy Spirit has shown us that we only have one adversary, and that is the devil. And I'll give you that scripture. Well, let me just give it to you in uh, First Peter, I believe it is. And I believe it's First Peter 5. He says, your adversary, the devil. Your adversary, your opponent, the devil. So also know that God is not your enemy. You know, so many times, and until I heard the word, I didn't know. I didn't know what to resist and what to accept because I didn't know what was from God and what was not from God. But we are learning, and God has given us the Holy Spirit to guide us right now into this truth so that we know what to what is coming from the enemy and what is not. So we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. Therefore, I take unto me right now the whole armor of God that I may be able to withstand or overcome in the evil day and having overcome all I stand. I stand, therefore, my loins are girt about with the truth of the word of God. I have on the breastplate of righteousness. I have been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. For it is written, and my feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, of shalom, of total well-being, of health, of prosperity, of um, safety for me and my family. I have a covenant of peace with God that will never depart from me. And I take the shield of faith, the shield of faith where I say and I believe that those things that I say come to pass and therefore I have whatsoever I say. I take the shield of faith around my entire family in Jesus' name. And 
we quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and I take the helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation. I put it on my mind right now. It encircles my mind and my family's, my children's minds, my spouse's mind. The helmet of salvation, of deliverance, of rescue, of safety, of health and prosperity. I have that on my mind right now in Jesus' name so that the enemy cannot penetrate the helmet of salvation. And this is what the Lord showed us yesterday. And the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So the sword of our spirit is a vital part of our weaponry. You know, the more we learn, the stronger we are and the more accurate we are in the things of God. So he show, showed us yesterday in Hebrews 4 that the Word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing even dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And then in Revelation chapter 19, verse 13, that Jesus was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, and out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations and rule them with a rod of iron. So what went out of his mouth was a sharp sword. Then in Revelation 19:21, And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth. This is our weapon, the sword of our spirit, which is the word of God. It is uh, light. I heard someone say this the other day, and I thought it was so well put that, you, have you ever seen any of the Star Wars movies where they have lightsabers? And when they turn that lightsaber on, it just cuts in pieces, whoever the enemy is. Well, the sword that comes out of our mouth, which is the word of God, when we speak that word, then that is the sword of our spirit, and that is the sword of light, God's light, that cuts in pieces the enemy and anything that's in our way. And what is it? It is the word of God. When we speak the word of God, it is written or it is said. And yesterday we saw how Jesus used that sword against the enemy when he was tempted in the wilderness. So let's revisit that because I saw something that uh, needs to be emphasized where it said, And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command the stone that it be made bread. So how did Satan tempt him? It was thoughts in his mind. We, it says that Jesus was tempted in all points like as are we. So he was tempted with thoughts in his mind. And that's the way Satan, his tactic that he's used against us. But this is what the Lord wants us to see. But Jesus did not answer him with thoughts. He answered him with, it is written. The sword comes out of the mouth. You cannot battle thoughts with thoughts. You have to take the word of God against thoughts and say, it is written. It is written. And then quote that word and the Holy Spirit will give it to you. Whatever you need to say, he is in us. He is helping us. He is uh, guiding us, 
and we just trust in him to give us utterance, to give us exactly what to say. Because you know, it was after Jesus was baptized in the Holy Spirit, after the Spirit came on him, that he was uh, sent by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And he shows us how we are to do this. This is such victory because when you speak the Word of God out loud and you say it is written, then that Word, it, it cuts right to the enemy and stands against him and he cannot stand up against the Word of God. And I noticed that as soon as Jesus said, it is written, Satan had to change the temptation. He couldn't just stand there. He cannot stand up against the Word of God. So saints, we have been given everything, everything that we need to overcome and to walk totally victoriously in every area of our life. So remember now, you cannot battle thoughts with thoughts. You have to say, and have you noticed that when you're talking, when you're speaking, that it does away with the thoughts. And, well, let's just look at an example of that, and we'll go into a little more detail. But, um, let's take the thought of, say, uh, lack. Uh, maybe you need some money for something. And that thought comes that you aren't going to have enough. And so what do you do? You say, it is written, wealth and riches are in my house. It is written, I have a surplus of prosperity. It is written, my God has made all grace abound to me, that I always, having all sufficiency in all things, abound to every good work. It is written, my God shall liberally supply Feel to the full my every need, desire, and want according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Or maybe it's a thought like, well, you've been a tither, you've been a giver, and you have not received your return. And you say, it is written, because I've brought all my tithe into the storehouse, there's meat in his house, and I prove him now that he has opened to me the windows of heaven, and poured me out a blessing that there's not room enough to receive it. And I've given, and it is given unto me. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And, not only that, but whatever I've given for the gospel's sake, I have a hundredfold return. And this one is very subtle, is condemnation of condemning you because you did something wrong or said something wrong or didn't do something right or... It's all condemnation. And you say, no, it is written. There is therefore now no condemnation to me who is in Christ Jesus, who walks not after the flesh, but after the spirit. And that's how we take the sword of the spirit and we speak it out our mouth. You know, a prime example of that was David when he spoke directly to Goliath, the enemy. And he said, well, first of all, Goliath talked to him, and then he talked directly to him, and he said, I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts of the armies of, the, of Israel whom you have defied, and this day I will, and said exactly what he was going to do, and he said, because the Lord saves not with... Um, with, let's see, the Lord saves not with, I think he said with spear, but he said the battle is the Lord's. So David spoke directly, and that's what we are to do, is we are to speak directly and say, it is written. And you know, if you don't know a word, the Holy Spirit will give it to you. Just receive from him, Lord, give me utterance. There's been many times that I would say, Lord, I know my thoughts are not right, but I don't know right now what right is. Show me. Put your right thoughts into my mind. Put your right words into my mouth. And he will do that. 
He is here to help you. He did not leave us without help. Praise God. So remember, you cannot handle thoughts with thoughts. You have to say, it is written just like Jesus did. So, we have to know what is from Satan and what is from God so that you know what to resist and what to receive. Well, every good gift and every perfect gift is from our Father, but John 10.10 10 lays it out for us so, so perfectly. The thief comes not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And Jesus said, but I came that you might have life and that you might have that life more abundantly. So right there, you draw the line down the middle. What is from God is good. And the things from Satan are to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So just a brief, um, kind of like a synopsis of things from Satan so that you know strife, unforgiveness, anger is from Satan, which allows him entrance. So we, we shut the door. We shut the door on the enemy. Doubt is from the enemy because God will never want you to doubt his word. So you can speak to that doubt and say, it is written. I doubt not in my heart. It is written. I am redeemed from doubting day and night. And that, that's a good one. I am redeemed from doubt in Jesus' name. I am not of doubtful mind. It is written. I am not of doubtful mind. And um, fear is from the enemy. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And that's 2 Timothy 1, 7. All sickness and all disease is from Satan. Don't ever let the enemy tell you that God is allowing sickness for a reason or that um, it's because you've done something wrong or you've not walked perfectly toward the Lord. Healing is a gift, just like your righteousness is a gift. And healing belongs to you right now only because Jesus purchased it for you. It is a free gift given to you. But let me give you the two scriptures that show you that all sickness and all disease is from Satan. Now remember, Satan is your adversary. God does not allow Satan to work in your life. Satan is God's adversary. He does not use Satan in people's lives. The religion has just come up with the most unreasonable thinking ever. And it takes the Word of God to straighten out our thinking. In Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. That is the will of God for you. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. So he tells us right there that all sickness and all oppression is from the devil. So right now, just note that in your mind. I will not receive anything from the devil in my life. Sickness and disease is from the devil. And then uh, the other one, because the word says out of the mouth of two or more witnesses, in Luke 13, 15, 13, 16, Jesus had just um, killed a woman that was bowed over. And if you have arthritis or you have, um, let's see, any type of, well, any type of arthritis, I guess, or anything wrong with your bones, 
and you are bowed over and not straight and tall, then you can use this because Jesus said, woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. And then when the rulers of the synagogue came against him, he said, ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham be loosed Oh, whom Satan hath bound, that was the key phrase, whom Satan hath bound, lo, these many years, be loosed from her infirmity. That's God's will for you. So every sickness and every disease is from Satan, but saints, we can, with the sword of our spirit, be loosed from all infirmity, all sickness, all disease, in Jesus' name, by taking the word of God that says, 1 Peter 2, 24, by whose stripes we were healed. And I like to add this, and made perfectly whole. And then I um, shared this one with you, but condemnation is always from the devil. Anytime you feel condemned over anything, then it is always from the enemy. The Lord may correct you for something, but he will never condemn you over it. And so you just simply say, it is written, Satan. There is therefore now no condemnation to me who is in Christ Jesus. Is Jesus condemned? No. We are in him, so we are not condemned either. There is no, there is therefore now. I say that to you right now. There is therefore now. You say it right now. It is written. There is therefore now no condemnation to me who is in Christ Jesus. And then all lack, all poverty, and all scarcity is of the devil. How do we know that? Because it's written in Deuteronomy 28 that uh, that's one of the curses. Is lack, poverty, scarcity, debt one of the curses? And according to Galatians 3.13, Christ has redeemed us from all of the curse of the law. Praise God. Any type of destruction is from the devil. So you just resist it. And actually, you start out every day just acknowledging your authority in Christ Jesus and who is your Lord. And acknowledge that Satan is bound off of your life. And I'm kind of getting ahead of myself on that. So let's um, let me give you this scripture in 1 John 3 8. It says, For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. So the Lord has shown us what the works of the devil are. And, but how is he going to do it? As, as he does it through us with our authority, we take authority over the enemy. Praise God. I think we might have enough time to do this. So the first thing to do is take a lamb for your house. You know, in Revelation 12, 11 says, And they overcame him, Satan, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. So they overcame him, Satan, by the blood of the Lamb and their confession of faith. Two things, the blood of the Lamb and their confession of faith. In Exodus... 14, no, Exodus 12, verse 3. This is, these were the instructions. And this is what you and I do now because we're walking in the Spirit. So we have spiritual weapons, spiritual um, warfare, spiritual, how do I say this? Well, spiritual weapons, yes. So this is what the Lord said to Moses, speak unto the congregation of Israel, saying to all the congregation of Israel, in the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb 
according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. A lamb for a house. The Lord showed me this several years ago when Satan was trying to steal um, my daughter from me. And I just went to the Lord and said, Lord, I'm asking you to show me how to get her out of the um, the power of the enemy and get her back where she needs to be. And he said, he took me to this, and he said, you take a lamb for your house. And he showed me in John 129, where John said, behold, the lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And he said, Jesus is your lamb. It's his blood. And this is what he said in Exodus 12, 23. For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not allow the destroyer to come into your houses to smite you. So the blood of Jesus over your entire family and believing the power of that blood. You know, they had to believe that the blood was going to keep the destroyer out. Not only did they put the blood on their doorpost, they had to gather their family in then and put the blood on the doorpost. And then they had to believe that that blood was sufficient to keep the destroyer out. This is not something that you hear taught a lot, but it is a valid truth. The power is in the blood. And so as you take the blood of Jesus over every member of your family, over you and, and every person's mind, over your bodies, over everything that you own, you take the blood of the lamb. He said, I will not allow the destroyer to come in. So start out your day with that. After you give God thanksgiving and praise for his goodness and for our redemption. And just remind the Lord that you have taken the lamb for your house. That Jesus' blood covers every member of your family and covers everything that you own and covers your paths, that blood will not allow the destroyer to come in to smite or to destroy. I uh, remember one time when someone that had been part of our church, they lived in uh, South Alabama, close to Gulf Shores, and she called and she said, um, we've got a hurricane coming and I need to know what to do. And Frank told her, he said, draw the line of the blood around your property in your mind and you just speak by faith. The blood of Jesus is all around my property. And, and then, you know, confess this. And so she called after the hurricane had left and they lived in a mobile home. And she said that only one plant on their porch was even turned over. And that on either side of them, their neighbors were destroyed. But their place, nothing, nothing was touched. Just one plant turned over. And that's the power of the blood. So this is something that we need to be fully aware of, that the blood of Jesus has been given to us for our protection against the destroyer, that he cannot even come in and smite us or destroy us. So take that and acknowledge it. Acknowledge it every day. Of course, we do it once, but then we just stay in faith that the blood covers our family and will keep them from the enemy, from the enemy trying to 
uh, take them captive from the enemy trying to lead them astray, especially as you have young children and uh, teenagers growing up. Our trust is in the Lord our God. We do our part as parents to guide and to uh, teach, to teach the Word of God, to guide, to pray for, but our trust is in the Lord our God that he will not allow the destroyer to come in and to destroy our family. Well, this has been so rich and so good, and I just want to praise God for this. Like I said, the more we learn, the stronger we are, the more accurate we are, and the more victorious we are. Remember all day, Jesus is Lord. Thank God for this word. Thank God that it is working mightily in us and for us. In Jesus' name.